Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton. I am glad to see you here on this Thursday morning, July 20th. 20th of July today. We had rain last night. Um, my weather station says a little over a half inch maybe, um, which is a good thing. We, we needed more than that, to be honest, but um, I, I can live with a half inch. A half inch is, a half inch is all right. Um, but we probably need, well, we've needed for a while and we probably still need like an all day, much as I, I don't want to have one, an all day soaker, just a slow, constant rain amounting to an inch, inch and a half over a, over a full day. You know, it's interesting because, uh, this, this, um, uh, the, this uh, Christian Foundations class that I'm having on Tuesday nights, we uh, we, we went back to Genesis and, st and talked about that a little bit. And I, I honestly think, and this is my opinion, I don't know, someday I should see if anybody has written something on this. But I, I you know, I am by no means a, a lifelong learned, well, a lifelong learned man of the scriptures. I'm, I'm learning as you learn. Um, I know a few things, and I know a, th a few things not to know. Um, but one of the things that I have begun to consider, and that I think is, uh, uh oh, looks like we dropped out. There we are. We're back. Um, okay, we're back, or we should be back. I wonder if we're having. Um, is is that from from the creation? Um, from the time of the creation until the time of the flood, I don't think it rained. Um, you can water plants with a mist. And uh, in the description of the creation, um, it talks about there being a mist across the ground. And I, you know, if, if every morning, if every morning there was a, a heavy dew, a heavy mist across the land, and, and considering that things are much closer to the perfect state at that point. Um, I don't. I don't think that a rainfall was necessary, which makes the whole events of the flood, um, forty days and forty nights of rain, uh, to be downright, downright frightening. Um, in fact, you know, you know what? Just for fun. This is for me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to wander here a minute, but I'm going to, I'm I'm going to look here for a minute at Genesis, uh, about chapter 15. Nope, that's Abraham. I need to back up. Let me go back to. Oh, there's Terah's descendants. Okay, that's uh, Tower of Babel. Noah's descent from the flood. Uh, Noah's descendants. Nations descend from Noah. I want the, I want the f first. Uh, okay, increasing corruption on the earth. I will blot out man from the face of the earth. Uh, Noah was a righteous man. Had three sons. Um, uh, saw the earth. Behold, it was corrupt all flesh. And God said, "In turn, make an end of all flesh. Make for yourself an ark." Blah blah blah. Cubits. Behold, I will bring floodwaters upon the earth, and everything is under there. I will establish the lives of sons, everything alive, male, female, for any creeping thing on the ground. Also take with you every sort of food. Noah did this, all that God commanded him. Go in the ark, be in your household and his mate, and I will send rain. Here, I want to, what I wanted to see, here's the word rain in English, right? The word rain in English. But I want to see here... See, this software lets me do these amazing things. I can do a Bible word study on rain. Uh, uh, let rain fall. It rained. And I want to look at, up here, um, actually, maybe we'll pull this out. Okay, it's not the first use of the word rain. But in Genesis 2.5, 
for the Lord had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. That's the first use of rain when, when it says that God had not caused it to rain. And then the next time rain is used is Genesis 7, 4, I will send rain, which is where I started here. I will send rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Um, so other than other than the creation narrative where God says, uh, or where, where uh, Moses records that it had not rained, um, uh, we don't see the word rain, but the, the first time we see rain in the scriptures is, is when it's, when it's going to rain. Um, I, just an interesting thing. I'm, you know what? Don't quote me on this. You know I mean? <laughs> um, let's get, let's, I'm just checking, I'm just checking the satellite here quick because we had that outage. Um, let's see who's here while I'm getting, while I'm, while I'm messing around with this thing. Oh, nine seconds ago it was possibly obstructed. That's what it was. Yep. Uh, three o'clock this morning it rebooted. Uh, network issues. Let's just run the speed test while I'm talking to you guys. All right. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you. Jerry, good morning. 70 and breezy. Yeah, we're in the 60s. In fact, I thought I saw 58 somewhere. Um, and we're only going to get into the 60s today, it looks like. So, no, we're getting 46 down and 10 up. That's that's good enough. We probably just had a glitch. Um 70s for you guys. We, you know, we're going to be rainy all day. I think I haven't looked at the radar, but Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Cindy, good morning. Happy Thursday to you as well. Verna, good morning. Ann, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Alan, good. Oh, I jumped to the bottom. Alan, where'd you go? There you are. Good morning, Al. Good to see you here. Kathy, good morning to you. Jill and John, good morning to you guys up there in Rhinelander. I'm not going to Rhinelander today. Well, maybe I will. Let's see if I can talk Bonnie into having supper at at uh, at uh, pizza. Um, yeah, P not pizza wheel. P not pizza wagon. That's lacrosse. Um, not pizza doctors. They're done and gone. Well, anyway, only because of the fried chicken. Right, so anyway, Jill, huh? Pizza Ranch, that's it. Um, Jill and John, good morning again. Michael, good morning to you and Karen. Went to our grandkids' swim meet in Gross Point Woods last night and home at 1 a.m. Yeah, Ugg is right. You know, you reach a point where after 10 o'clock, meh. That's why, that's why I did the recorded um, uh, devotion on Monday because... Bonnie didn't get back from Indiana until Sunday night late. And, you know, you, you can't just come in the house and go to bed. I, I stayed up waiting for her. And you uh, you got to you gotta have some time to settle down. So by the time you're done, it's 1 or 2, one or two o'clock in the morning. And, <sighs> yeah, I just don't I, don't, I don't do that well anymore. Stay up too late as it is. I have to get up early. Well, anyway, good morning to all of you. Those not commenting, hello, I'm glad you're here with us and that you come and you put up with a little bit of my yammering for a little while. Um, so good morning to you, God's blessings. Oh, Renee, good morning, sneaking in there at the end. Uh, oh, there's Devin Grant, too. Good morning to you guys. And, and Bonnie popped in here, too. Um, uh, so hi, Bonnie. Um, yeah, those in the background, hello. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word. And as also, uh, those over on YouTube later today, hello. Glad you're taking this time to spend in God's Word. We've messed around long enough here. Let's uh, let's get down to the, to the mission at hand. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order found on page 200 and... 95 that's where we begin here each each morning so let us continue uh, in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch uh, yeah, my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our, hymn, our psalm today, not our hymn, we did our hymn. Our psalm today, Psalm 81, verses 1 through 10. It's a it's a 16-verse psalm, so I opted to kind of cut it down here to 1, uh, 1 through 10. Um, so Psalm 81, a little, little throat lubricant first. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song. Shh, sound the tambourine. The sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon. At the full moon on our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel. A rule of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph. When he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a language I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Mirabah. <clears throat> Sorry, a little return on breakfast there. Um, in, 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 your hands were freed from the basket. In distress, you called and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Mirabah. Hear, O oh my people, I will, will, while I admonish you. O oh Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Um, sing aloud to the God of our strength. Shout for the God of Jacob, and raise, raise the musical instruments in singing and praise and joy. The, the festivals at new moon and full moon, the feast day, a, a, a statute for Israel. God gave, God gave the people of Israel commands to have certain feast days, certain celebrations throughout the year. Uh, and those are all held in the same way, um, making it a, a decree, a command, a, a rule uh, for the house of Joseph. And he went out over all the land of Egypt, um, which probably is a reference to either uh, their time in Egypt or um, uh, just just the um, events at the end of the, the plagues. Um, and I heard, a, I hear a language I had not known, Egyptian, right? Um, the language of God was the language of the, of the Hebrews, but now the language of the Egyptians is a language I had not known. And, I, and, and, and he freed them from slavery. I relieved the the shoulder of burden, uh, your hands were freed from the basket in distress. You called and I delivered you. I answered you in the, the secret place of thunder. Uh, referring to, oh, the abode of God in heaven. That makes, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, how, how often we think of God as being up in the heavens where thunder is, right? Um, not Thor, God of thunder in the Norse legends or in the mythology of the Marvel comics. Um, but yeah, the, the, the place is above where God is. I am the Lord your God. There's no, no uh, mistake about this. God says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth and I will fill it wide. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Open your mouth and I will fill it wide. God will provide all the things that Israel needs. Um, even, even, even as they wandered in the wilderness, everything they needed, not necessarily everything they wanted, but everything they needed was provided for them. And even when they entered the land of the Canaanites and, and uh, took over the promised land, uh, the land of milk and honey, flowing with milk and honey, um, they had everything that they needed. God gladly provided daily bread to, uh, to his people, filling their mouth, filling their every need. <laughs> like, like baby birds with their mouths open, he provided for them. All right, let's continue here. We'll go to our 
our reading, Romans chapter 12 now. We, we finished up chapter 11 yesterday uh, with, with Paul's doxological statement. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And so, so he's kind of finished up. Oh, hi. Oh, yes. Yes, most certainly, most definitely. A little coffee. Oh, wow, it was lower than I thought it was. Hello, everyone. That's the danger of this mug. When it gets low, it's, and I put it down too fast, it slops. Okay, so um, chapter 12. Um, the, the shift changes a little bit now. Um, chapter 12, verses, today, verses 1 through, 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, right away, Paul's making an appeal here, right? Right, right off the, right off the bat. Now I've got to get, yet. Come on, don't fight me. I got to get this here. Uh, nope, a little further. There. Um. Right away, Paul makes this appeal to his brothers, to to those who are in Christ. Right now, he is referring to you and I, and and the church brothers. Um, there's a note here that says to look at chapter 1, verse 13. Yeah, not exclusively men, including all siblings. An affectionate greeting used 10 times in Romans, showing Paul's kinship to the believers, men and women, in Rome. Um, as children of one father, Christians are members of one family. So this is, this is, this is something to keep in mind. Right? If we are in Christ and we are children of our Heavenly Father, as the hymn says, um, then we are a family, right? And, and like all families, we fight. But we also have a love from one another, and we would defend each other um, quite literally to the grave. So he makes this appeal to those who love Christ, the brothers in the church. Um, and he says, by the mercies of God, which is the, the key to this whole letter to the Romans. Everything we do is by the mercies of God. There is nothing that we don't do, uh, nothing that we can successfully do ourselves, except by the mercy of God. Um, we live by God's mercy, shown in the grace of Christ Jesus by his gift of his life upon the cross for us. Um, and so he says, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, it's interesting here um, that these exhortations are proper mercy or, or a proper response to the mercies um, that have that, that Paul is speaking of, right? Um, Luther says, for all these things, it is our duty to praise, to thank, praise, and obey him. Talking about the Lord. Um, and, and what shall I render to the Lord? Um, 
all I have is is the sacrifice of thanksgiving and and so he has he has washed me made me whole made me new in him um, he did this to my body which is which is still flesh stuck in a sinful condition and so the the sacrifice of thanksgiving is as Paul says to present our bodies ourselves as living sacrifices to God um, in the Old Testament animals are offered as not as living sacrifices but sacrifices to be put to death right their their death is what gives life and Christ fulfilled all of those sacrifices for us by his death so that we would have life and so our proper thanksgiving is our proper spiritual worship is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice um, our entire life becomes dedicated to God. Does that mean we live every single moment of our day doing the God thing? Well, yeah, it kind of does. Right? Paul in another passage, I think it's in Thessalonians, calls on us to pray constantly. Well, how can you be constantly in prayer? I'm not going to spend my whole day on my hands and knees. I have to sleep and eat and work and do all these other things. Well, yeah, but you can pray while you're doing those things. In fact, He's placed in us that Holy Spirit that groans inwardly and outwardly so that, so that even in the midst of our unknowing what to pray, we're praying. I mean, he's in us. He's with us. So, so our, our life of... Uh, Luther would say, and, and he's not wrong on this, he gets it from Augustine, and Augustine gets it really from what Paul is saying here. Our, our, the life of a Christian is a life lived in repentance, right? Because we know we can't do what God demands we do perfectly, uh, but we also know that it's been fulfilled in Christ. And we know that what we are unable to do, we are forgiven. And you know, what does Peter say on that great day of Pentecost when he's preaching? He says, repent and be baptized. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So our lives are repentance. Um, the terms of worship and sacrifice are, are not um, necessarily different. Uh, they, are, they are connected to our entire earthly life. The very fact that we're alive um, is a sacrifice on God's part. Um, so we, you know, it's not just the time in church. Church is important. Right? Let us not forget to gather together has become the habit of some. God, God wants us to be together. He's a God of unity. He's a God we're, of, of, of togetherness. And, and he wants us to gather in the body of Christ and in, in the church and uh, worship. But there's also the family is a gathering of faithful believers, right? When you gather with friends and neighbors and relatives, that's a gathering. And when you go into the workplace, you're not alone. There are brothers and sisters in Christ there. Right? No, it's not simply the time spent in church. The Augsburg Confession says this. It says a true and not false putting, on, putting to death or mortification happens through the cross and troubles by which God exercises us. They are the spiritual exercises of fear and faith. In addition to this putting to death, which happens through the cross, there is also the necess necessary voluntary exercise of our faith, right? So the, the daily trials and tribulations that we go through, the suffering in this life that is just inherent to the fallen nature of the world in which we live, living in it, enduring in it, and remaining faithful to Christ and, and, and keeping, uh, keep, how do I want to say that? I don't want to say keeping ourselves pointed to Christ, but keep the Spirit keeping us pointed to Christ through, through those other times, like church, when we can be spiritually strengthened. Um, uh, these are the things, this is, this is the life of a Christian, right? Um, it is, it's a faithful act when a mother or a father changes the baby's diaper. Um, it, it is an act of faith to tie your child's shoes. 
it's an act of faith to to love your spouse with all that you have and can do and to provide for them as as they need or to support them as they need support it's it's a faithful act to support your spouse as they're going as as life ebbs and fades and remain with them these are suffering um, but they're suffering to God's glory because Christ gave us life we live in that and and so our suffering becomes worship a sacrifice a living sacrifice uh, Paul has spoken of reasonable service um, or, 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 or spiritual worship, um, literally liturgy, um, in, uh, namely the, the worship of the mind, the fear of faith, prayer, um, thanksgiving, and so on. You know, that's from the apology as well. And Paul is guiding us, directing us to, to a life of faith, a life of sacrifice in Christ. And that's just the first verse. And it's already 9 o'clock. So he, I should have just taken verses 1 and 2 for today. What was I thinking? So he says, do not be conformed to this world, right? You have been made something new in Christ Jesus. You have been given new life in Christ by his death and resurrection, by your baptism into that and the promise of eternal life in him, by God's Holy Spirit working in you uh, to renew you and strengthen you and give you an endurance in the midst of the suffering that is the sacrifice and the spiritual worship of life in this world. So do not be conformed. Don't look at this world around us, the things that are not of God but are of this world, and say, oh, that's good. I desire that. No. Do not be conformed. And, and today we've got so much stuff. So much stuff. Even within various churches, so much stuff that is just the world. But, he says, and, and is this a, is this a, uh, yeah, this isn't a law. This is the big but, right? This is the, this is the, put it in your face and pay attention. But, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Metamorpho, that is the, I believe that's the, the Greek word hiding here, right? Be metamorphosized, be, uh, be changed, be morpho, have, have a change of form, um, right? The word of God the grace of God, the mercy of God, faith in Christ Jesus, the very word of Scripture changes you, right? You can read a novel again and again and again, and you may have, a, you may have an intellectual experience of some kind from it, or you may garner some wisdom or knowledge of things that you hadn't thought of, but the Scriptures transform your mind, your way of thinking, and they really do. I mean, this is, I can, I can, I can vouch for this, right? The, the, when you read the scriptures and you're in them daily, you are, you are changed. You don't view things the same way that you used to. You don't understand them by, as much by your human nature as by this new creation, right? So be transformed, be changed, be metamorphosed, um, by the renewal of your mind. And that's that's the work of God's Spirit and His Word in you. The renewal of your mind. Uh, what can I say about that? Um, what does Paul say here in Titus? Oh, yeah. No, that's not... You know, this is... He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, right? You have been, from the, from the gift of baptism and the eating of the body and blood of Christ, you are being changed. Not to be more like this world, but to be more like Christ. Now, you won't reach that perfection until the day of your death, but a cruciform life, that is to say, crucifying that which you know is not right, right, destroying those things in your life which draw you away from Christ 
and 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 uh, feeding and strengthening those things that move you towards Christ. Is every day like that? No, we're human beings and we've got a sinful nature in us as well. And that's why there's forgiveness. And that's why Christ had to die on the cross for us to accomplish these things for us because we can't do it for ourselves. But that doesn't mean that God's Holy Spirit isn't working in you through word and sacrament to accomplish his purposes. So don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. Testing. Examining. Right? And what are you, what are you testing? Well, you're, you're testing the things in your life to see if they are the will of God. And what do you test them by? What is, the, what is the canon, the metric that you set the things in your life against and see if they are the will of God? Well, there's only one place that the will of God is revealed, and that is in the Holy Scriptures. You don't, you don't compare them to the preacher. You don't compare them to the commenter. You don't compare them to the, to the leader of the church or some person who seems to be really good in society, you go back to the scriptures and you take your life and you lay your life onto the scriptures and say, is this the will of God? Is this what is good and acceptable and perfect? And you know what you're going to find? You're going to find that you need to repent. You're going to find that, that much of your life is not good and acceptable and perfect and not the will of God. And you're going to repent and you're going to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Help me to do better. And Christ is going to look at you and he's going to say, I forgive you. For you do not know what you did. But now, go and sin no more. Right? Like the woman caught in adultery when everybody else had vanished after they'd made the accusations. And Jesus says, where did they all go? And she says, I don't know, I guess they didn't find any guilt in me. Jesus said, then go, neither do I, go and sin no more. That's the mercies of God. So therefore I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God. That's your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that comes through the, through the word of God and the sacraments that by testing you may discern what is good, what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And the peace which surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and mind in that same Christ Jesus, drawing you into those things. Amen. You know what? We're going to have to pick up three through, three through eight tomorrow because, yeah, I'm going to have to readjust my whole schedule for you guys. The hymn today was, By Grace I'm Saved. And this is it. Verses, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. By grace I'm saved. And I, and I remain in that salvation, sanctified by the renewal of my mind, so that I am not conformed to this world. Oh, I didn't realize there was that much. I mean, I knew there was that much there, but I didn't realize there was that much there. Brothers and sisters, I appeal to you. Read this text again today. If you, if you don't have a Bible out in front of you now, after we're done here, get it out and put this in front of yourself and read it two or three times and, and see if you can plumb the depths of it even more than I did. Amen. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed on this Thursday morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven He sits and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, my little, my little prayer book that's here has a, has a, a poem, a poem here from Fa Francis R. Havergal. I wonder if he's Swedish. From 1874. Another day is dawning, dear master, let it be. On earth or else in heaven, another day for thee. Gracious Father in heaven, I do not know when you will call me home, for in the middle of life we are in death. Regardless of the number of days, number, my, number of my days on earth, cause me always to be prepared to answer your summons. I know that the road of my life leads finally to your heavenly mansions. Equip me for the trials and pitfalls of life and teach me to perform each duty that confronts me in your holy name. Remind me daily that I am a pilgrim without a home here and help me to assist my fellow travelers by sharing their burdens and showing them the glory of the life lived in you. Whether my pathway leads to hilltops fair and high or through the sunless valleys where the shadows lie, it does not matter. For I know you are with me, and that you are ever, your everlasting arms are beneath me. Where you lead me, I will gladly go. Guide me unerringly on, on life's uncertain way until I reach my heavenly homeland. In Jesus' name I ask all of this. Amen. We pray also for those who are in need on this day and all who call upon your most holy name in prayer. We pray especially for those uh, who suffer near as the end of life draws near and for Ron, for those recovering from surgery and other things, Robin and Gail. And we pray for those whose needs are body, soul, and mind, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Tim, Dan, Ezra, Jeremy, Ashley, Holden, Cheryl, Dawn, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear their prayers and ours for the sake of Christ, who lived, suffered, died, and rose again for the salvation of all mankind. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be, we be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that is our daily devotions for Thursday, July 20th. God's peace be with you. And we will, we will see you back here tomorrow at 825. Central Daylight Savings Time for our daily devotions together. God's peace be with you.